Hello and welcome to Introduction to Networks, Module 9, Address Resolution. So uh, in this chapter, we're going to talk about specifically ARP and something that is equivalent in ARP and not for IPv6. Uh, so it should be a very quick chapter. Don't forget to take the notes that I asked you to and submit them as homework. All right, so uh, one of the first thing we should know is what is the difference between layer two physical address and layer three physical address. So please write these two points, bullet points down. Uh, the MAC addresses is when you want to communicate from one device to another device in the LAN for directly connected devices inside a LAN. NICs, you, they are used to tra they are labels that are stamped on frames, and frames are the PDUs that are transferred between hosts in a LAN. IP addresses indicate, you know, uh, is a layer three address and indicates when you want to communicate from one LAN to another LAN. So think of MAC addresses like I told you earlier. MAC addresses are like buildings in an area, the number of the building. Um, the area is the IP address, is like the zip code. So you have a zip code where there's a lot of buildings in it, and each building has a number. And that number is the MAC address, and the zip code for that area is the IP address. Okay, The people that live inside the building, John, Joe, Mary, our port numbers will identify what each one of those people are. So uh, the labels that are placed on the transport layer port numbers are like the people on, on your letter when you are writing your letter. The MAC address is the number of the building, and the IP address is the zip code, right? The, your switch is the mailman that comes around and knows where all the building numbers are. Your router is your um, post office for your um, for that specific area, right? That's a good analogy on how to think about the port numbers, MAC addresses, and IP addresses. All right, so uh, whenever you want to communicate, okay, so what you do is this router has a default gateway. This is the IP address of the default gateway. Why do we call it the default gateway? is because whenever you want to send data, first of all, your PC is going to assume that you're sending the data to somebody inside the LAN. If it's not inside the LAN, by default, PC1 will send the data to the gateway. That's why we call this the default gateway. So anytime you want to go outside your LAN, by default, your PC will send it to the router so it can go outside. If PC1 doesn't know, what the IP address of the gateway is, you will not be able to go outside. You can only communicate with devices inside the LAN. All right, so it's pretty much the same thing. Let's talk about ARP now. All right, so let's say host one wants to communicate with host four. So he has his IP address already. So what does, what is a, uh, what does a, uh, PC1 there, I know we, we did this before. He's gonna get the source IP address, put it on his packet, and takes the destination IP address and put it on that packet, takes the packet and encapsulates it into a frame, and then host one will put his MAC address on the frame, but now he needs the MAC address of host four. He doesn't know where host four is located in the switch. So what, is he, what does he do? He sends out an ARP request to all the hosts, which is a broadcast message, to all the hosts in the LAN, and saying, hey, whoever has this IP address, remember, host one knows the IP address of host four. Whoever has this IP address, please give me your MAC. Host four is going to send back his MAC, and he puts it on the frame, and then he'll, he'll send the frame to the switch. And what does the switch do? Looks at the destination MAC address. He sees that it's host four, and he knows that host four is located at this port. He'll send it to him, right? All right. So what happened? This is really what the this how you know 
this is step by step on how it works. So please write these steps down, right? These four bullet points. We can always pause. I'm, I'm just going to keep going. All right. Um, moving on. Now, what happens if you do not, if you went after you send out a bro, uh, the AIP request, let's say you wanted to get something. Well, let's do it a different way. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe I think I jumped ahead. Removing entries from the routing table. The ARP, not the routing table, the ARP cache. So when you get the uh, the AR, the um, the MAC address from the destination, what you do is you put it in your ca memory cache. And what you do is, instead of having keep sending ARP requests, because you already know it, you just keep wrapping it and you send it and uh, send it out. Um, if you don't communicate with that host, like that host four again, and if you don't com you communicate with them for a certain amount of time, that um, the MAC address in the cache will will be removed. It takes about five to ten minutes. So let's assume that this is the IP address of air of number four, right? Host four, and this is the IP address of uh, the PC, PC one. So what happened is when you send out an ARP request, when he gives it to you, he puts it in the RAM. Um, so in his cache memory. Let's say this is the default gateway. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But uh, so once he has it, if you type ARP-A, you'll see all the people that you communicated with and send you their MAC addresses. This is their MAC addresses. So you will always use them from the RAM. You don't have to send ARP um, requests anymore. All right? Um, so, but what somebody can do, they can go in there and change this Mac address in the cache. And so what, what, what you, that's called, um, ARP spoofing, unfortunately, but we'll discuss that some of it. We don't have to worry about that for now. Um, but going back one more time before we continue on. Give me one second. Now, what happens if A wants to talk to somebody outside on the internet? They already got his IP address from the DNS server, so to create the packet, put the packet into a frame, and then he puts his MAC address on it. Now, A, host A, doesn't know that that IP address, he doesn't know that the IP address is on the internet. It's, he still thinks that that IP address is somebody here. All right? So he sends out an ARP request to everybody. Hey, whoever has this IP address, give me your Mac. Nobody is going to respond. Then by default, you request the ARP of your default gateway. And the default gateway will give you your Mac address. And then you'll send that to the default gateway to go outside. So in the ARP, it's going to say, if you want to reach this IP address, let's say yahoo.com, the MAC address is this for it because you're going to send it to here. What this attacker can do then, he can go in and pretend to be the default gateway. He can go into your cache, right? The ARP cache and puts his IP address instead of your default gateway IP address. So anytime you want to communicate with the outside world, instead of sending the packet to the router, because the route, your, your PC is going to be sending the data to this guy, this bad guy right here, the man in the middle. What is he going to be doing? He's going to be looking at your data to see if he can extrapolate anything. And then he, he can send you out on the internet. You have no clue that this guy exists. So we got to make sure that no, this guy doesn't do any, make sure he doesn't connect or poison the ARP, right? All right, so we'll talk about that later on. Now, when we get to IPv6, IPv6 does exactly the same thing. We just give it a little bit name. Instead of calling it ARP, we call it neighbor discovery, right? And they use two things. They use neighbor, neighbor solicitation, that's ARP request, and neighbor advertisement. That's ARP reply, but that's for, of course, 
IPv6. So please write these down. The ICMP neighbor solicitation and neighbor advertisement. This is the messages that we use equivalent to ARP request and ARP reply. The router solicitations and router messages, that's between routers for router discovery within the, um, within the network. All right, so, um, so here you go. So this guy is doing an ARP, an ARP solicitation, right? They do exactly the same thing. Hey, whoever has this IP address, give me your Mac. And this guy does a neighbor advertisement. Sorry, it's not by mistake. He does a neighbor advertisement to send back his MAC address. And then you send the frame and they'll be able to receive it. All right, that's it, believe it or not. That's it for chapter nine. So please write down the notes that I asked you to and submit them as homework. And I'll see you on the next chapter.